brief summary of what we just did. Um, and we did this on screen. You can look at the on screen uh, process of counting the pendulum. Uh, but we got for lengths L, 1 half L, and 1 fourth L, uh, 49, 72, and 98 counts, counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So we draw a graph of count versus length. We didn't measure the length of the pendulum using anything, but we doubled the string and then doubled the string again, uh, kind of folding it in half and folding it in half. Uh, we got this, uh, this data, and here are our results. So that y equals the count, x equals the length. Now, we know from what we've seen previously that if we have a power function, then uh, the y factor for doubling x, and that's exactly what's happened here. We've uh, taken the length and doubled it and doubled it. Actually, we halved it and halved it. It has the same uh, effect. Um, if the power function factor is about 75%, which is what we get from this graph, uh, and what we did up here was we picked uh, an x value, not one of our data values, but picked an x value. Uh, and doubled that and then doubled that, sketched a curve that we thought fit our data points pretty well. Remember, this is a hand sketch graph. And estimated uh, the points on our graph that correspond to the uh, three lengths, uh, the original length, double that, and double that, actually. So we had this point, this point, and this point. We did horizontal projection lines, which I drew in yellow. And then we do green, drew green arrows. Uh, representing the y values at this point, that's this arrow, this point would be this arrow, and at this point would be this arrow. And then we looked at the y factor. Uh, the y factor here appeared to be about 80%. This appeared to be about 80% of this. This appeared to be about 70% of this. We averaged, uh, uh, that would indicate that uh, we don't really have that constant of a y factor, 80% here, 70% here. But remember, this is a hand sketch graph. There's some flaws in the graph. The right angle isn't great. And uh, this is all done by hand and at a bad angle. And our data acquisition might not have even been that good. I was using a, a, a clock that can be a little hard to read and not keeping really good parallax. So all kinds of errors that could occur here. So 80% here and 70% here doesn't mean that we don't really have a common factor in this pendulum count versus length. But it's kind of shaky. If we do, if we do have a power function, if we do have a power function model that works for pendulum count versus length, then uh, according to our graph, our best guess would be that our y factor when we double x is about 75% or 0.75. Well, we know that the y factor for power function y equals x to the p, when we double x, the factor is going to be 2 to the p. So if 2 to the p is 0.75, because that's what our factor should be, the 2 to the p should be our factor, uh, then we can solve that either by trial and error or logarithms. We get p approximately equal to negative 0.42. This implies a relationship uh, y equals x to the negative 0.42, but of course, we haven't scaled this axis. If we scale this axis in centimeters, we'll have different numbers on this axis than if we scale it in meters uh, or if we scale it in inches or some other unit. Uh, to take care of the scaling in a way that we'll detail a little bit later, um, we got to put a factor A here. We're going to multiply our x to the negative 0.42, our x to the p function, by some constant number A. And we would then get the uh, model count is A times our length to the negative 0.42. Now, a better graph would give us a factor closer to 0.7 than to 0.75. Factor 0.7 would give us a value of p. 2 to the p would equal 0.7, so the p would be about negative 0.5. And then our model might be closer to count equals a times the length to the negative 0.5. You're encouraged to investigate that. We then calculated the period corresponding to each count, period being the time required for a cycle, a cycle being two counts, cycles from here over and back. 
we got these results. <coughs> and this is easily calculated. We graphed it. Uh, I picked, again, three points on the x-axis with each point doubling the x value preceding it. And carefully, uh, you know, of course, I sketched my graph carefully, tried to uh, subdivide my unit, which I chose here, uh, as carefully as possible. And you know, didn't get it all that good again. Uh, in any case, drew the graph, picked these three values, got these three y values here, here, and here, represented by this arrow, this arrow, and this arrow, and estimated the y factor to be about 1.5, an honest estimate based on what I saw. Uh, so if y in this case is ax to the p, now of course this is going to be a different model than this one because y is now going to mean period, x is still going to be length. Uh, we would get 2 to the p equal to that factor 1.5, so that p is about 0.58. Now, a better graph would give us a factor of 1.4, um, and then uh, p would be close to about 0.5. But uh, again, you could easily uh, redo this, use your own counts, take your own data from the video, the original video, and um, see what your model is. But this would be a model for period, a times length to the 0.58, or to the 0.5 if we use uh, a little better graph and subdivide it a little more carefully.